Hey guys, welcome to You and I Practice. I hope it's you and I practicing and not just me. Um, the way I'm currently doing the videos, there's no real way of knowing, but I am considering sort of doing live, you know, streams in the future where you guys can get involved as well if you're interested and, you know, talk through the process with me, share any tips and tricks you might have, and likewise, I'll do the same. Today, we're gonna to be doing things slightly differently in that, obviously, you can hear my voice for a change. But yeah, I thought instead of doing the quick speed builds and not really saying much, um, every time I've done them, I've had some thoughts that I've wanted to share, basically, whether it's things I've discovered or um, just general engagement, you know, that I want to get from the community. Being a UI artist or designer, UX designer, um, we should all be connected. You know, we're all doing the same stuff, having the same struggles and trying to create the best art right or design solution and um, having the communities better for that. So hopefully, yeah, if I start talking a little bit more about these things, maybe do some live streams in the future, um, yeah, things just start to change a little bit and we can get a little community going. But anyway, back to the video. The, um, the intention here is to take Elder Scrolls Blade, which is a pretty cool mobile game that came out uh, maybe about 2018, 2017 maybe and um, might have been a bit later, but around that time. And I played it, yeah, for a little bit. Um, didn't spend ages with it, which was a surprise, especially, you know, how much I, I played other Elder Scrolls games. But one, one thing that I really liked was their delicate UI and then the contrast of the, you know, the parchment paper. Uh, by delicate, I mean like the buttons are really simple. They're essentially just frames. I couldn't really do a speed build on drawing a rectangle with a stroke because it wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't teach you anything. We already know how to do all that type of stuff. But the parchment aspect, I kind of thought, yeah, I love making parchment. You know, it's like the gateway into some magical spell. <laughs> so I took the uh, a screenshot of the game from the internet and yeah, I've just started recreating it. As you can sort of see, Parchment is really easy, like there's a few basics to it. So it's just a container with maybe a gradient map over it or a solid one, depending on you know where you want to go with it. In this case right now, I'm adding a frame. You can add all sorts of frames, you know, wh whatever you like. It could be like Celtic frames if you're trying to make sort of a Viking or Norse inspired type of one. Um, or, uh, you know, some sort of like ornate one which you know has more sort of like decorative elements you know that's that's up to you to decide when you're doing your sketching but for, for, for this example I just put you know a, a stroked frame just to sort of pull it in a little bit the thing I like about Figma and creating this type of thing is as, as you've already seen the um the beauty of the the different sort of like boolean operations so when you subtract one shape from another it's really cool um in that it's non-destructive you know in other programs it would be pretty destructive meaning you would lose capabilities of rounding corners or dragging that element around without having to target the uh the anchor point specifically with this the triangles that I added that creates that it creates those little notches. Um, I can just drag those up and down, um, you know, position them, copy them, and get them exactly how I want. And that's one of the great things about Figma with this type of thing. One of the not so great things about Figma, which I really struggle with, so if you've got a solution for it, please let me know, is when selecting fonts, I can never see a preview of the font that I want, and I also can't remember the name of every single font that I use and enjoy, at least not all of them. And Figma doesn't seem to do what um, Adobe does, for example, which is it will show you a little um, image of the styling, which I, I kind of find is really helpful, especially during speed builds where you need to make decisions really fast and you're trying to find the right font for the job. Figma, I struggle with that aspect. so. If you know a solution for it, please let me know down in the comments because I'd love to know. So as you can sort of see, 
I've recreated, you know, the button, very basic button in this case, and that's fine as well. Like we don't always have to com like completely overhaul a button. Sometimes you don't need to innovate. Um, a button needs to serve a purpose that's more than just an aesthetic choice, which means simpler is sometimes better. And simpler is definitely where Figma thrives. If I was to create a button in the style of Diablo, where it's a bit more um, detailed, it might be hand-painted, Figma would not be the place to do that. It's not great for illustrative or more gestural type of creations. And you would probably go and use Photoshop or paint it up in Procreate. And then once you've got it looking right, you'll bring it into Figma and yeah, create a component out of it from there. But in this case, quite lucky because this screen is a very simple UI. I wasn't too sure how far I was going to go with the, the concept here because I was really quite happy with the parchment, how I managed to get the offsets, the notches, the shadows, use of gradients and texture. Um, but I started creating a little coin icon here um, just to help sort of add a bit more context to the screen for the video but also utilizes the power of gradients once again, which I absolutely love gradient tools. <laughs> they're, they're amazing. One thing about parchment in Figma is, or just generally is like, the characteristics of it are typically messy, noisy, and there are ways to do that with a Figma as we've seen by applying um, fill images and then do like blending modes and stuff like that. But what I accidentally did was I imported my textures that I ge uh, generated using Substance Designer and applied them within Figma. And these are like, you know, 2048 squared textures, which are way too big. So what I noticed was Figma was sort of lagging. Um, and this is this is the app that runs on the desktop as well but it was really sort of struggling with these big textures and there are times in game development where you do want the game te game textures to be that big um, but more often than not within Figma you want to resize them down and just tile them so you know maybe a 512 is suitable hey 512 might be even suitable for the game engine as well it really just depends So here at this point, I'm still sort of like trying to get some grittiness, some texture into there, utilizing the, you know, the noise textures that are tileable um, that I mentioned a minute ago. I wasn't too sure on like how far to go with this. One thing to think about when creating these types of UI elements is when you go to implement it, are you, is it going to tile? Is it going to scale? Do you need to slice it up? And sometimes baking this noise and grit into the sprite itself isn't the best way to go. And a, a better way might be to um, pre-slice everything like you would have done with the old websites that we used to build back in 2010. Or um, you might apply this noisy gritty texture over the top of a, a base sprite within unity and have that set to tile so it gives you that sort of yeah that paper feel that, that we're going for so right now i just um dragged in an icon that i'd created um it's kind of a bit of a random icon but i wanted to get somewhere close to the elder scrolls thing and these are some icons that i created a while back so I thought I'd bring them in for sort of completeness. The uh, Chevron icon that I used is one of the plugins within Figma um, from a, a company called um, Feather, and they make some really nice delicate icons. In my opinion, you don't always need to recreate um, the more generic uh, recognizable icons, such as a Chevron or a pause button or a play. Um, settings icons for example you don't necessarily need to 
Um, you could spend more time, you know, making other things look cooler, like this um, hand-painted sword icon that I did here. That was painted a while back in Procreate. And um, it's really those types of things. So like the key art aspects or the, you know, the spell light icons or those types of things that really do add the character to the UI. So spend more time there as opposed to spending more time making a chevron look good. But that's it essentially guys. The, uh, the yeah, the concept went quite well I think. Um, I'm always mindful about how long these videos are and I don't want to take up too much of anyone's time. But I really enjoyed it and if you think you know this type of format was useful and you know you do yeah you've got some useful tips out of it and stuff like that then you know obviously let me know in the comments below if there's something you want me to cover something missing then please like drop a comment below um, if you like the video give it a big thumbs up and um, if you haven't subscribed I know quite a few people haven't subscribed um, but do watch the video content you know hit the subscribe button and uh, whenever I drop a new video, uh, it might be this type of format, it might be slightly different, you might even get to see my face one time. Um, yeah, you'll, uh, you'll be first to know when that happens. And um, yeah, that's all guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, until next time, I'll see you soon.